Well, hello and welcome to the Virtual Canadian Immigrants Conference. Hopefully you've been enjoying today's event. We've got another half hour to go and uh, we've got a great guest here, Prashant. I'm going to introduce him in a second here. Uh, but it, uh, we, we're going to cover a lot of uh, his background. He, a lot, he wrote a great article uh, that we want to talk about. But hopefully you've had a good time so far. You've had a lot of chance to hear some of the sessions that we've been going on. I'm just going to wait another minute or so before starting the, the uh, panel and the interview here because uh, we have uh, another session that's just wrapping up. And uh, also, hopefully, you've had a chance to visit the networking area or the expo area. And uh, again, if you're just joining, my name is Mark Belish. I'm president of TorontoJobs.ca. Today's event is presented by TorontoJobs.ca and TorontoEntrepreneurs.ca and powered by EventLogic with a K.ca. So uh, we're just going to give it another 20 seconds or so. It's just I see people coming on to the platform, so that's good. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for being on today. And hopefully you've been able to have a few good takeaways from today's event as well. So I'm going to start uh, by introducing our uh, panelists here. Prashant Gupta is Senior Associate Due Diligence Services at Mazars. Thanks very much for being on, Prashant. Thanks, Max. Thanks for having me. No problem. Welcome, welcome. So, uh, Prashant, why don't we start a little bit about your background as uh, in your role, what you do right now, perhaps a little bit about your profile and how you came to Canada as well. Sure. Uh, so I am a chartered accountant. I graduated in 2015 uh, from India and then I worked with some of the big four companies in India. Uh, I started my career in deal advisory and I worked with EY and PwC and had a good experience uh, and exposure over there. Then after working there for quite a few years, I thought, okay, I want to take my career to the next stage. And then I started looking at the opportunities abroad and then I was uh, very much impressed uh, by the opportunities that Canada presented as a country and uh, in my career as well. So I thought, okay, both professionally and uh, personally, it is a very good move and therefore I should, I was very interested to immigrate over there. And then I, I started the process and then I was able to immigrate uh, and land in Canada last year in November. Then I started my job search and it was obviously a difficult phase uh, due to the COVID season. Um, my, it was a very difficult journey, but I was able to find a very good job within a couple of months. And right now I'm working with a firm called Mazars in the deal advisory practice of uh, financial due diligence. So my role over there is uh, to help in the mergers and acquisition of uh, the clients uh, based in US or in Canada or even in Europe. And we are helping the clients in the financial due diligence, uh, doing the financial analysis to help out, help them out in the complex process of the mergers and acquisitions and uh, providing the best services to the clients. So this is my current role and it, I'm being, I'm part of a great team. I'm learning good amount of things and having the good exposure of, of the Canadian environment. And yeah, the journey is going great. Excellent. Well, great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being on here. Uh, and uh, we're going to delve more into your story as well. Uh, Namesh, Namesh uh, Rama, Ramaswamy is lead immigration consultant at Bordered Immigration Redefined, right? Namesh? That's correct. Welcome. Yes. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi, very good. Thanks for being on here and uh, welcome. Here. And uh, same with you. I know you may have missed the very beginning, but perhaps you can just uh, give uh, the viewers an idea as to what you do and what you're involved with and how perhaps you uh, help Canadian immigrants. Perfect. So my name is Nimesh, uh, Nimesh Ramaswamy. I've been in Canada for almost a decade now. Uh, I came as an international student uh, almost a decade ago and started my journey there. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, of course, there's been some challenges along the way. Um, I worked with Married International for about seven years uh, before starting my own immigration practice. I, had, uh, I have an extensive uh, experience in immigration field and hence now I am uh, leaning towards helping individuals and companies who want to migrate to Canada and who are looking for jobs, opportunities, um, companies who are looking to settle down here, make their, bring their own subsidiary here, getting themselves settled down, um, companies looking to um, hire international talent here uh, based on their skills and experiences. Uh, I work with both, both sides of the, uh, both ends of the market. And um, I've been doing that and uh, it, I run my own consultancy uh, practice in here in Etobicoke itself. So we work with a lot of uh, uh, companies that are in the GTA and a few in Alberta as well. So we work with different employers and we have clients around the world. Excellent. 
Uh, so if you are watching and you have a question for any of the panelists, feel free to put them in the event or in the stage chat, and I'm happy to uh, moderate. So, uh, so Prashant, maybe you can talk about the uh, challenges of, of getting your first job uh, when you when you came and, and uh, you know what helped you, what what uh, hurt you, uh, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, that's an interesting question. So when I was, you know, um, when I was back in India, I knew that there would be challenges along, along the path and I am coming to a new country where I do not have the ex uh, experience. So I was uh, almost prepared for it, but uh, then the COVID happened and the journey uh, and the, everything was, you know, so sudden that uh, it the world went into a different mode and i was in a difficult i was in a different different difficult phase uh so that uh, gave me kind of more that to strengthen me more to uh to face the challenges when i would be coming to canada and then when i came to canada i was already prepared i was mentally prepared uh to face all the kind of challenges i was so determined that i would be finding the job so i was mentally prepared that uh, was one of the things that helped me and I started reaching out to connection on LinkedIn and uh, on the job portals, on the job sites, trying to understand how the Canadian market works, what are the strengths and weaknesses in my profile and what should I be doing, doing to overcome them. Uh, I was reaching out to many of the connection that were able to help me and uh, that were able to advise me what should I be doing. And these were some of the things that I, I would be uh, I was doing on a daily basis, you know, uh, as a full time job. Even I was uh, I didn't have had a job, but I was doing that as a full time uh, to find a job as soon as possible because uh, it was uh, because I'm living in a uh, expensive city like Toronto and I don't have a job, so I wanted to have that as soon as possible. And I did everything that I should be doing to find a job that suits my profile. That's uh, is. Uh, uh, that was as per my experience and i was very lucky to find the one in a couple of months uh and it uh, was a great profile and i just jumped on the opportunity excellent great stuff and namesh how about with yourself uh you know what advice would you give to somebody who's thinking about moving to canada and, and what kind of conversations do you typically have uh with them so initially, the, the initial conversation that starts with any person who's wanting to move is virtually moving here for a new life, a new job, and all of those things. So when they when they technically are moving to Canada, they specifically ask for uh, what kind of jobs, what kind of city would they uh, would they be more preferable to stay in, which where where the cost uh, where the cost of living is low, where they will be able to get themselves settled better and quicker. Uh, because they are moving in a later stage of their lives where they have already started a career with more having about five or six years of work experience and into a mid management level. So again, they, they are planning to start a family soon, maybe in the next few years, and they would want to move, settle faster in a new country, get on a job real quick and get, get on hands on. May, the major uh, expectations of anyone who is moving to Canada is having a job in hand and moving to Canada. But again, those, uh, the percentage of those people are is very low, um, given the factor that you know uh, not not every employer here in Canada is wanting to have an international um, international employee who is who doesn't have a permit yet to work in Canada. So those are the challenges that we face. But we do because I work on both the ends of the of the market here. I'm able to connect both of them where the employer has a need, and I am able to I'm able to connect uh, both of them into this entire um, ecosystem. Right, excellent stuff. And uh, so if you have any questions for anybody on the panel, uh, feel free to post them in the event or in the stage area, and uh, then I can uh, moderate from there. Uh, so uh, Prashant, what, what, other, uh, um, what other suggestions would you have for people coming over to Canada? Uh, what, you know, what, what you're, what are there, anything else that you haven't mentioned so far that you feel that would, you know, would be helpful for somebody new to Canada? Um, so I think when the people are deciding whether they should be moving to Canada or not, uh, the first thing I would say that I would advise them is to have a solid reason that why they want to move to another country. If they have a very focused goal of why they want to achieve this particular thing, then everything becomes easy and uh, that's just the path. But if they do not have a particular goal, then there's a problem and then the difficulties would be like, okay, I'm facing those difficulties and then people would be uh, trying to find another way out. 
but if the goal is very much focused then they would be just walking on the path and so i would uh, rather advise that first analyze the goal and be very straight in your mind why do you want to choose this after that just try to find out the opportunities in your desired field talk to people who are working on those field connect with people in linkedin or uh, through other social uh, uh, professional uh, platforms try to understand your field the canadian market and uh, see if it will work for you or do you see this aligns with your career goals or not and then try to take a decision excellent and uh prashant has for those of you that don't know if you visit his uh, uh linkedin profile he's got a great link to uh the journey uh from moving to uh canada right it's yeah so uh, i can briefly talk about that so yes. um like i said uh during the covid times it was a difficult journey for me so i connected with a few of the journalists uh in canada with the canadian news media over here so i was published a couple of times uh, when i was uh, back in india and then when i got the job i was contacted again with one of the uh news uh, uh, editor over there and they thought i had a great journey i faced those difficulties and they wanted that they thought that it would be a motivating uh, motivating story inspiring story for other people as well who are going through difficult times in the covid so they offered me that i should be write, writing an article that would be inspiring to others so i was uh, i thought yeah i would uh, give it a try and I, I wrote that article i think probably back in march when i got that job uh and so it has got uh, many views and uh, it has been liked by everyone and uh, it uh, it can be read over the cic news or probably through my linkedin page and i hope that it gives inspiration to other as well to try to decide who are deciding to move to another country maybe canada or who are facing those difficult challenges right now or maybe any time in future so i would really suggest that if you want to uh, read that article you can go through my linkedin page and you would be able to find that article over there yeah, it's definitely a, a good read and uh, definitely worthwhile. Uh, Namesh, how can someone take advantage of uh, of speaking another language in the sense of like, how can they use that to their advantage? Well, again, uh, specifically, again, as as having a background in hospitality and working in that field for uh, for, for quite a bit, I have seen that people who are speak, who speak different languages, there are uh, there are people who travel around the world. They don't specifically uh, they don't have English as specifically as their first language. Again, majorly, I have seen the use of Different languages being uh, being a uh, being an uh, asset to the to the job is having is in the hospitality sector, for example, or to be to be per se in any service sector where you have a customer facing there there might not be a person who is in front of you who is wanting to who is who is who, who is very well known in English, but he might be he might be something that is more like even in my job currently, as I know a few languages, the opposite person is not always very comfortable talking in English. So, but you have to get your point across or the information across. That's when you are able to leverage that um, language asset on your own and have them uh, have them able to understand the entire factor there right so again just to just to what prashant also does again i run an own uh, again this is something that i started recently um i do my kind of um, helping out and letting people know as of more information on my instagram page um so what, what i do is my experience is what i've known in this country what a person a new immigrant or a new student who should come to canada and what sh what they should be aware of and what they should be doing to make their life better because when you come here the first couple of years is always more into um, settling down, understanding how things go around here. You have a lot of culture shock, like and I had in the first few years. So you have you go through those. So just to make people aware that this is how things are done here, um, I have started this own Instagram page where I give a lot of information to a new, a lot of new immigrants and a lot of uh, new international students. Um, I do, I do get a lot of appreciation for that. That you know, I have a lot of good content up here, uh, putting up there. So they learn from those experiences, and when they come here, they're ready for it. Or if they are already here, they are already learning out of it. Excellent. And uh, how? So you mentioned uh, Namesh that uh, you can help people uh, find a, a job through, uh, or you know, help them out anyways through your uh, social media. Prashant, any suggestions? Uh, any ways you can help uh, newcomers as well? You personally? Um, I think I think uh, from what Nimesh has said that he's doing a great stuff because uh, I can relate to that because uh, when I was back in India uh, a couple of years back, I was also clueless on many of the points. 
uh, and there are many basic points that uh, people want to have knowledge of, but they are not aware where to find that information. So I do get many messages on LinkedIn or on my uh, Facebook profile that how should I be able to do this or that. Uh, so this is a good thing that if anyone have any questions, they can reach out to me or probably Nimesh as well. Uh, as, a, as I think he's very welcoming to uh, help others as well. So uh, I'm very uh, uh, open on responding to LinkedIn uh, and I try to help out as much as I know uh, to the fellow immigrants uh, who will be coming to Canada in the next few years. I try to give my professional advice uh, to help them out and uh, apart from that they can read the article they can get some information from there and if they are looking any for kind of any job help or something i can maybe if i can reach out to my network or something so that i can try out from my perspective from that whatever i can do i can help them out in the best possible way okay and you had mentioned to me uh, earlier that your company is also hiring as well so do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah, so my company is currently hiring for a few positions in audit role and uh, it is a good company. So they are continuously hiring for some role or the other. Uh, so currently they are hiring for audit roles and if somebody have the experience, they can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I can refer them uh, through the internal database and they will be uh, they will be taking it forward from there. Okay, great. Perfect. And uh, just, just to add on that, uh, yeah, Mark, yeah. again, so I, I actually work with a lot of tech companies here. Uh, they are uh, consulting tech companies who are looking for um, a lot of different roles, specifically for software engineers, web developers, graphic designers, uh, a lot of those people. Um, majorly, they are, yes, looking. Uh, the first choice for them is always a, people, a person who is inside of Canada and maybe has a permit already. Uh, again, that's the challenge that, you know, uh, they don't you don't have that kind of a talent here in Canada who are already here and uh, have those kind of skill set. So that's where the labor market is uh, going through a lot of uh, shortage in the, in the tech industry specifically. So a lot of people from India where I'm trying to connect uh, the employers who I have and the people who already have the experience there, I try to connect with them. And if the employer is happy to sponsor them, I work with, this, uh, with the employer and get them here into Canada. And I specifically work uh, with you also, Mark, and, and also with other companies like Toronto Jobs of TA. Uh, um, where there are, there are a lot of jobs available with different uh, in different fields. I try to connect them both because my, my end goal is when anyone who is immigrating to Canada, they should have a full full plan ahead for the next six months when they are here to know what they are going to do ahead and not just land into the country and not know anything. That's where I come in professionally and personally to help them out and guide them in any way I can. Excellent. Um, so Mark, I would like to just add on one thing. Um, so Nimesh does help on a professional level and you does on a help on a professional level to the fellow immigrants. But I would also like to clarify that I'm an uh, immigrant by myself, I am myself, so I do not have the professional exp uh, exposure to this, but I help uh, people on a personal level. So if someone is thinking on that, I would be able to help professionally, I won't be able to do that. I just would be able to give my personal perspective and would be able to advise from the first experience that I've been uh, giving that. So if people think that uh, I do able to help them in any, any kind of immigration process, uh, I wouldn't be able to do that. But I, I would just be able to help them in giving the best advice that I can give from my perspective or what I've experienced through. Sounds good. Uh, and maybe Namash, uh, what, um, for people, I, I know this has been like this in many years, even my parents, when they came to Canada back in 1958, uh, that you don't have Canadian experience, so uh, and it's tough to find a job because you don't have Canadian experience. So you got to build yourself up. What do you What do you tell people? What do you advise people? What have you been saying to people when that comes up? So that specifically comes up, Mark. Is um, I tell them to specifically uh, post on their skills. Uh, because right now there's like, you know, for example, for CPA, if you have an auditing skill yourself, then you basically post your auditing skills in every job that you have done. And if you're looking for an audit role, so you, I know the Canadian experience does matter because it's, it's easier for them to technically get them into the, uh, into the company culture much easier. They know the ways around. They don't need to know how things work around here. That's the major factor as an employer also always faces where this new person does not know how it works in Canada. 
he needs to learn he needs to know that's where the canadian experience comes into place again yes you don't uh, as a new immigrant you're not going to have that for sure so my second um, my second suggestion to them is always focus on the skills you have because the employer is looking firstly definitely the uh, the background you have that Come, uh, it comes from the Canadian work experience. Secondly, is a skill. If you have the skill that you're they're technically looking for, it, fitting into a culture is not difficult. Uh, I'm pretty sure Prashant can validate that point as well. Uh, if you have the skill, you are pre technically can be culturally fit in that um, in, um, in that company as well. Anywhere, anywhere in Canada, obviously. Yeah, I completely agree with that. If you have the skills, then the employer would be very much confident to have you on the team. And then they would only be looking at the adapting skills, whether you would be able to adapt to this environment or not. So it would become very easy if you have the right skill set and they would be very happy to have you on the team. So Canadian experience does matter, but it is not a uh, it is not a blockade that would hamper in getting the first job. Right. Awesome. Uh, so what about the pandemic? Uh, how how has that benefited or hurt uh, a new Canadian? Um, I would say the pandemic has definitely hurt the new Canadian in some of the other way. Anyone who basically came into the peak um, of the COVID times, maybe in the in the start of March 2020 or Feb at the end of February, February 2020, they were trying to settle in and the uh, pandemic broke out. That's when the country shut down, all the operations went work from home, hiring was frozen in all of the, almost all of the industries uh, across, across the world. And uh, that's when a lot of layoffs started happening, no new hiring. So people were left without jobs even after having the perfect skill for a job um, maybe they could have gotten in a month or two they were left stranded for months uh, it took them time to uh, until the end of last year to find a job or even a, uh, even 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 a basic job they could go for uh, a lot of people who initially had a good uh, qualifications uh, from back home or experience as well they are unfortunately had to go for all jobs to make a living out of it so this is something that I have seen as negatively impacted the experience of a Canadian immigrant who wanted to come for, to live the dream life here in Canada and now has to go to le learn the hard way, which he never thought to be because he was sitting there in an office, a beautiful uh, air conditioning office, sitting there working on his laptop, uh, talking to people. Now he's here lifting or distributing stuff, which he never wanted to do in the first place. Yeah. Prashant, anything to add to that? Yeah, I think I would agree completely with uh, Nimesh because the job market has been difficult uh, since last year, not just in Canada, but throughout the world. So job opportunities are quite less right now. And I myself faced those uh, uh, period when I came to Canada that uh, not many jobs were on the market. Um, so that is uh, definitely a drawback that the pandemic has bought. But I think on a brighter side, uh, it has made the life a bit easier as well because we are able to work from home. So we are able to uh, uh, do don't need to go to office and we have more flexibility. But uh, that's a bit of the brighter side. But I would uh, I would completely agree that yes, the challenges are more than the uh, the, the advantages for at least for the new immigrants who do not have the Canadian exposure as of now. So that's a bit tough for them. But I think that uh, that is also for a couple of months. Once they do get the job, it is just a matter of time that they will be able to adjust and adapt to this environment. But uh, to the upside of it, um, Amor, where uh, right now the, the Ontario government and the federal government just basically re released a report last week of the labor shortage that they have. The labor report uh, last week where they have specific labor requirement in a few specific um, fields like healthcare. Uh, HR managers, uh, software development, uh, tech uh, tech workers. So technically, these people definitely the the uh, the pandemic has pivoted these um, these kind of roles to be uh, see an uptick in the market because technically now to hire those tech workers they need more more HR managers now to uh, to. To support all of them, they need more. Uh, to support the healthcare system, they need more nurses. They need more healthcare workers. So all of those things have definitely seen an uptick, which I think was never seen in uh, uh, in the pre-pandemic phase. Uh, earlier, it was always uh, more into accountants and managers and managerial role. Now it is specifically moved to a skill set where anyone has a specific skill set in medical science or um, in the tech uh, in the tech field. Mm. Excellent. Uh, so we only have a few minutes left. Is there anything um, else that you'd like to add that we haven't talked about? Uh, maybe Prashant, you want to start? Anything? Any other advice for new Canadians or uh, people? People maybe thinking of coming to Canada. Something about your story that you want to share? Mm -hmm. 
So I think the only advice that I would be giving to the new Can Canadians who would be coming to Canada or who has recently arrived in Canada is that uh, be strong. You have uh, done a great deal. You have achieved uh, good success so far and don't give up if you face any kind of small obstacles along the path. It's just a part of the life and it's just part of the journey. It's making you stronger and the God has uh, good plans for you. And so it's just uh, if, if it is a difficult phase, it's just a matter of time and then good things will come very soon. Excellent. And Namash? All right. So again, uh, there's a very small motto for me when I usually say to my clients and for anyone who's coming to Canada, work smarter, not harder always. You have specific ways where people technically Canada works or the Canadian people work. Understand those terms, understand those tactics, understand those uh, skills, and you will you will find a job. You will find all the things over and above coming through it. There, there, are, there are different ways to get things done. Uh, but you know, just work smarter, and I think that is the that is the motto I have, and that's the way I have done it, and I think it's have gone well uh, so far. Terrific. Well, thanks to both of you. Uh, really great advice, and uh, you know, I, I know people watching really appreciate the honesty and, and uh, the sincerity of uh, your comments. It's great to hear. So, uh, just hold on for just a couple of minutes. I'm just going to wrap things up here, but I want to thank uh, everyone for being on today's uh, virtual Canadian immigrants conference. Today's event was presented by torontojobs.ca and torontoentrepreneurs.ca and powered by event logic with a K.ca. My name, Mark Belish, president of torontojobs.ca and our panelists today, Prashant Gupta, Senior Associate Due Diligence Services at Mazars and Namash Ramaswamy, Lead Immigration Consultant at Bordered Immigration Redefined. So thanks uh, again to both of you. Uh, how did you like the event? Let us know. We'll send you a survey to complete within the next 24 hours. Uh, give us some feedback. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, so we can improve for next time. I want to thank all the speakers uh, that we've had today, as well as the team. There's uh, many people behind the scenes. Alex does a great job. Uh, again, making sure everything runs smoothly. Rachel, Anne, Sandra, Sarah, Carla, a lot of people behind the scenes. I uh, want to mention just about our sponsors uh, and exhibitors today, torontojobs.ca. If you are looking for a job, feel free to visit torontojobs.ca. If you're looking to fill a position, you can also contact us by emailing sales at torontojobs.ca. torontoentrepreneurs.ca. If you're an entrepreneur or you're thinking about starting up a business or you have an idea, make sure to visit the website torontoentrepreneurs.ca and event logic with a k.ca if you'd like to sponsor exhibit ad or speak at an upcoming event make sure to visit the website again event logic with a k.ca now we do have a number of great virtual events coming up you can visit torontojobs.ca slash news for more information but i'll highlight i'll highlight just a few right now the canadian virtual cpa pd day happens on tuesday august 10th the TO Tech virtual hiring event. So if you're in tech, you're looking for a job in tech, or you're looking to hire for tech people, make sure to come to that. That's Wednesday, August 11th. And the Canadian virtual bilingual career fair happens on Wednesday, August 18th. Again, visit torontojobs.ca slash news and EWS for more information. And then also on Tuesday, August 24th, there's a webinar on how torontojobs.ca can help you find a job. So if you're looking for a job, best way to do it. I'm going to also put in our link tree for our Toronto jobs in the event chat so you can uh, link through that through that as well. And you also have my LinkedIn connection as well that Alex has just put in the chat as well. So feel free to reach out to me if there's anything I can help you with and subscribe to our torontojobs.ca YouTube channel. There's lots of great videos on there. Uh, there's four, over 400 videos on everything from job search to resumes and, and more. So make sure to check that out, subscribe, and we do tack another 10 minutes onto the platform so you can visit, uh, get into the networking area. If you haven't checked out the expo area as well, you can do that. Your sponsors and exhibitors waiting to chat with you. So thanks again to each of you and thanks for coming and see you at the next event and stay safe as always. Thanks, Mark. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Amish.